starts, you can come on the day. When the procession comes, you can go anywhere you want. Okay. Okay. But, sure. Yeah. But when the, the when the you know the holy mass starts, you can come only up to here. Okay. And then the main function happens that is, you know, the what we call Talika time and the whole thing, the whole thing is going to go around for the next, that is the blessing on that thing, you can come close if you want. Okay, okay, yeah. Let me check. Is it SD out?
Иди на невесту мечетком повесь. На невесту повесь.
server and shading or and shading. And a really beloved couple, Kevin and Justin. It is my joy to welcome you to the sanctuary of our church to solemnize this occasion, the celebration of the sacrament of matrimony. I believe the Lord has called you to belong to Him as well as to belong to His church and to be part of this parish community. Both of you have been growing here in this parish, and so it is not any you are not any strange to, any, to each other, where you have known each other quite a while, by the grace of God. But at the same time, today, as you stand before this altar, it is the Lord who has called you to make your commitment to the Lord and to the Church to begin a new family. The basic unit of any community, especially of our Church community. And of course, these two families, the Hellenic family and the Arangeli family, they are hailed from the neighboring values of Blackburn, the Dice of Bali, St. John the Baptist Church, Pilibram, the Jewish Yoni, which he belongs to. Uh, of course, as my own parish also, we all grew up together. And then, of course, St. Joseph Church, Calcourt, the neighboring parish, and where Rosemary's parents grew up and practiced the faith and grew in the grace of the Lord. Now, under the guidance of the God of the Lord, both these families happen to be here in Coral Springs and very really active members of this growing community of all zero organizations. As Father Jorsi has already shared, Julian and Sally and the three boys are well involved in every aspect of the growth of this community from the very beginning and right now of course still takes care of the CCD program, the information program as a CCD, the RE, director of the country, education, education. And then of course, Rosmi also equally growing here in this community and sharing and giving the leadership to the youth group and other activities of young people. And soon, it is really a blessed moment to welcome you to make this sacramental commitment to make a new family, happy, blessed family. As you think of the family, of course, right now, in Rome, the Holy Father is presiding our special meeting, the Congress of Family, or Family Congress. From June 22nd to 25th, this great assembly of the families, once in three years, is held in all the other cities. This time, it's happened to be in Rome. And this family conference of Congress is being held in Rome. And then, of course, the Holy Father is given the king or the purpose of this family congress to make every family aware of the grace received from the Lord and to grow in that grace and to help each other and thereby to establish the family community, the faith community, and the world community. And also, the Holy Father reminds us that all of us are free human beings. No family is perfect family. There are a lot of human elements there. In spite of that, we have to grow together in the grace of the Lord. Work together to bring the kingdom of God here on earth. And that kingdom is a kingdom of love. And the basic unit of that love is the family. And the model for this family life is the holy family of Nazareth, where Jesus was raised by Joseph and Mary. And so I would invite both Kevin and Rosmi to intercede the blessing help of this holy family, thereby to make your new family up to this model. Let Jesus live in the family, in the heart, and his love is experienced through your gratitude to God and through your humble prayers every day, and thereby sharing each other, totally giving each other and totally accepting each other, 
there is a give and take principle in the married life, the sacramented married life. There is no 50-50 giving or taking, but it is 100% giving and 100% accepting. And so, let your new family be in that way, dear to the Lord and a blessing to all of us, to your community, to the church, and to your own families, and thereby your new family be a blessing of God to everyone around us. Also, we see the spiritual help of our Father in faith in Thomas the Apostle and all the saints of our church, that their example and their intercession be always a protection and guide for you in your newly married life. So, in the name of all of us here, I greet you and wish you all the best. And also thank both families and raising these children. Kevin and Rosemary to this table and bringing them together to consecrate them to the Lord through this sacramental celebration of the Holy Sacrament of Matrimony. Let us celebrate the Holy Command.
Lord, we pray for you before. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, holy, holy, thou art holy. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven and death are full of thy glory, angels and men sing of thy glory, holy, holy, thou art holy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. I will be done on the generation, and we will ask for our evil. For the righteous kingdom, the power and the glory, for our endeavor. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit.
more to that holy God. You who are pleased to dwell in the holy ones, we beseech you, look upon us, pardon us, and show us compassion according to your nature. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord of all forever. Sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in humans and in angelic tongues, but do not have love, I'm a resounding bell or a clashing symbol. And if I have the gifts of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but not have love, I am nothing. If I have given away everything I own, and if I hand my body over, so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It is not jealous, it's not pompous, it's not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over the wrongdoings, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, <coughs> believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Oh, yeah. 
the altar of God to make a commitment to one another. We need to question ourselves sometimes. Is such a commitment really possible? Because it is a lifelong commitment. Not just for a few days or for a few years, but until death do us part. Is such a commitment possible? It's possible with God. By ourselves we fail. We fail miserably. If you think that you found a perfect man to be your husband, you're mistaken. And if you think you found a perfect girl to be your wife, you're mistaken. Because there is no perfect human being. You are all good people. You are called to be not a perfect husband, not a perfect wife, but a good husband and a good wife. That is possible. That is the key to our human living. Not being perfect. You will have your faults and failures, shortcomings. There will be always. It will be there. Why? Because you're human. You're human. But with God's grace, we can make what is weak strong. Our scripture reading today, the first was from the book of Genesis, the creation of man. How did it end? Born of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Sorry, you don't come from this side. But the reality is this that in the sacrament of marriage, in this union that is there, in this oneness that is created, you become completely united to each other. And that is the key. That is the key. Yes, there are differences. 
And we need to be different. If we are all saying life would be boring, trust me, we want people to be different. And the difference is what we celebrate day by day. You are two different people, but you are united in one reality, love. That is what St. Paul spoke to us in our second reading in his letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind, love is never boastful, love never looks at the faults of other person. We will. I can guarantee you that from now, now after a few years you'll say, oh you do this, you do that, you do that, you do that, you know. This is our human nature. But when there is great love, even in the midst of all the short shortcomings and failures that are there, even in the midst of everything that we do wrong, we can still grow beyond the wrong self. We had a, a gospel reading, beautiful reading, but a very difficult reading to follow. Why? Because as the reading ended, the commandment that Jesus gives, love one another as I have loved you. My dear friends, that's not an easy task. Because he showed his love on that cross. There he sacrificed everything. Not for people who deserve it, people who do not deserve it. That is the key. So if I love as he has loved, then I can guarantee you one thing. Your love for each other will come to fulfillment and you will be happy always. As the bishop mentioned at the beginning, not a 50-50 arrangement. Sometimes people think, well, you know what, I put in 50%, she puts in 50%. Marriage is a different kind of mathematics. You put in 100%, you put in 100%, and you will still get 100%. That is exactly the key. There is no 50-50 here. You've got to commit yourself fully, totally, without any reservation. Look always to me for the good of the other person. So as Jesus said, love as I have loved you, it is to be sacrificing oneself for the other. Actually, when he was coming up, Paul Stanislaus jokingly told me, it's coming like a sacrificial lamb being brought up. <laughs> but it is actually true. Love is sacrifice. Love is a sacrifice. The more we sacrifice ourselves, the more we give of ourselves, the more we care for somebody else, that is when we realize the fruit of love. That is when we see that love is meaningful. Until then, we are not really loving. If we look only for ourselves, what can I get? What can I receive? What can I accomplish? No, that is not love. What can the other person do? What can I do for somebody else? That is love. And that is why Jesus said, love as I have loved you. Because he sacrificed himself completely on the cross for the sake of you and for me. Not because we deserve it, but because he loved us. Today you make a commitment to each other. Beautiful day. Wonderful. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to sort of make you scared or anything, but I'm just giving you some very practical advice. As long as you look to the good of the other person, always, every day, your marriage will be successful. The day that you begin to look at yourself, then stop and say, look, what did God do for me? He sacrificed himself for me. 
I sacrifice myself for the other person. Marriage actually becomes meaningful only when true love is present. If there is no true love, then that marriage has died. You're not wishing that your marriage should die. No, you want that your marriage should last to the day that you die. To the day that you die. A commitment to one another. A commitment of giving of yourself to the other. Marriage, as the church teaches, is one that forms a family. And the family is formed in love. You both have grown up in your respective families. Your parents are here. <coughs> They're not perfect parents. They're good parents. They try to do the best they could. And that's all we can ask. That's all we can expect. You will become parents too. And then you will realize some of the challenges that you place for your parents. Some of the questions that you raise to them when your children grow up. But that's the reality of life. That's the reality of life. But those should not be separated. At the end of the day, always remember love as Jesus has loved. Jesus has loved. There is no substitute. The world talks about love day by day, year by year. For centuries, we have survived. And never has the world stopped talking about love. Every marriage that is there, every relationship that is there, is Make sure of one thing. Always keep God in your hearts. The moment he goes out of your life, that's when trouble begins. That's when trouble begins. Marriage actually is between a man and a woman. But I said there are three people involved in marriage. A man, a woman, and God. When we take him out of the equation, then we have thrown away the uniting factor that brings us together. Always keep him in your hearts. I'm not telling you that your life is going to be perfect. I'm not going to tell you that everything is going to be easy. No, you will have challenges. You will. That is not going to stop you. Why? Because of your love for each other. The biggest challenge that is there, the biggest problems that you will face, difficulties that will come across you as you move along in life, you can overcome all those with God's grace and your love for each other. That is it. That is it. Today, you make, a, you make a commitment to each other. You make a commitment to God too. I will love the other person until death to a spot. But if it's a feeling of love, feeling, you know, feelings of change. Sometimes we feel great. Those feelings change. Trust me, you will not have the same feeling a year from today. Feelings will change. But commitment is not a feeling. And love is a commitment. Love is not a feeling. We feel wonderful about so many things. But we make a commitment to one another, and that commitment has to stay. That is the key. And you can do it. And you will be able to do it with God's grace. The families. 
friends, they're not there to support you, help you in your commitment to each other. Our prayer today for you is this, that you continue to be a successful couple, always loving God and loving one another. Loving one another. Make that your priority. Everything else comes afterward. You've got your work, it is needed for you to survive. You've got other family members, they are needed for your support. But ultimately, the two of you, they, you two are the key. You need to be considering yourselves as the first person. After God, your relationship has to be the most important things. Everything else comes after that. Are you willing to sacrifice? Yes. Sacrifice is the key to our love. The more we sacrifice, the more we love. It's actually when there is great love that we sacrifice more. When there is less love, we don't sacrifice that. Sacrifice actually becomes a measure of how we love. So tell you now, my wish and my prayer for you today, along with all the priests here, Bishop and the priests here, is the same. That you will be blessed as a couple, always living in love, growing in love, and being fulfilled in love for one another. Christ has loved us. Amen. <coughs> let us all stand up with joy and devotion and let us pray for this bride roasting and group of heaven who are going to be married saying, Lord, bless this couple. Lord, bless this couple. O heavenly bridegroom, who offered his life for his bride, the church, bless this couple to a life, to live a life of sacrifice and mutual love and unity. We beseech you. Lord, bless this couple. O Christ, who has taught about the indissolubility of marriage, help this couple to lead a happy life with mutual faithfulness and chastity. We beseech you. Lord, bless this couple. Who have blessed the couple in Cana by your presence, help this couple to lead a life of prayer, depending on your help and experiencing your presence. We beseech you. Lord, bless this couple. For the unity of love, which is the bond of perfection, obtained through the fullness of the Holy Spirit, we beseech you. Lord, bless this couple. For the souls of the faithfully departed from our families, that they may join the heavenly saints. At the wedding banquet of Christ, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and one another to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, Lord our God, be not our you. Lord God, bless this bride, give him to lead with success, the married life, and begin in joy and hope. Fill them with your peace, and make the world to eat your tea. The everlasting God, you have promised your servants, be gracious to this parents and to the dear ones who raised this couple in your love. Bless all who participate in this sacred ceremony, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, beautiful you forever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, the bride will me and the group Kevin are going to be united in the sacrament of holy matrimony. The sovereign prays for himself that he may administer this sacrament worthily. In reverence and attentiveness, let us now pray in silence. For God, who in the beginning blessed me with the life partner, we praise your eternal providence. Strengthen me, your servant, administer worthily this sacrament that binds this bride and will in love. So me, your abundant graces, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, glory for you forever.
Kevin. Being obliged to love Christ, and in regard to the teachings of the church, to fear and for consent, do you take Rusty as your wife? Yes, I do. Rusty, being obliged to love Christ, and in regard to the teachings of the church, with fear and for consent, do you take Kevin as your husband? Yes, I do. And your witnesses to this point of view? Kevin and Rusty, as a symbol of this nurture covenant, you may now join your right hand to this. May the God of Abraham, my second day, give me with you. May Jesus Christ, our Lord, unite you with the body of my age, in order to lead a family life of love and oneness of minds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now, always, and forever. Thank you. 
Do this in memory of me. 
we yearn to see those near to thee, story of sacred life giving and divine mysteries, though trivial and worthy. O Lord Jesus Christ, we give glory to thee and worship your majesty forever, for this living and life giving bread has come down from heaven and live gives life to the whole world. We are kings, this bread will not die, but we will see a remission of sins, attain salvation, and live forever. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
is the time for the reception of the Holy Communion. Holy Communion is truly the body and blood of Jesus Christ of our feast. So we will come only Catholics to this this be seated in silent prayer. Thank you. 
Christ the Lord, help of mankind, may the holy body and the precious blood that we have received, not be such an object and a condemnation, rather, may they obtain for us permission of our gifts, forgiveness of our sins, and fulfillment in your presence. Lord of all, forever. Amen. Let us turn from God to the grace of the Holy Spirit and give thanks to Him, the giver of all gifts, for counting us worthy to approach the holy altar and to participate in these glorious, holy, life-giving and divine mysteries. Lord God, we praise you for this ineffable gift. Let us pray, peace be with us. Lord God, stretch out your right hand and of mercy upon this couple. Keep them in the shield of your protection. O God, who blessed Abraham and Sarah, we thank you for the providence that bound them in indivisible unity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord of all forever. Amen. Bless us, O Lord. Lord Christ, do favor you upon this couple. May the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our Mother and St. Joseph, the head of the Holy Family, give them the post in their family. May the prayers of all the saints serve them. Lord of all forever. Amen. Blessed be God, the Master One, who out of his immense love created humankind as male and female and made them participate in the work of creation. May he, through the sacrament of holy enlightenment, Keep you in pure love and perfect dedication. May this sacrament empower you to offer your bodies, the dharmas of the body of Christ, and temples of the Holy Spirit, as a pleasing and living sacrifice to God. May God bless you with the gift of children. May your home prosper in a communion of faith. May He fill your life with gracious and help your hopes and aspirations flow. May He grant you lots of sincere friends, and to help you in need, may He make you worthy to offer Him praise, honor, and thanksgiving in the heavenly private chamber. May God bless you, the new world, and all who have partaken in this sacred service, now, always, and forever. Yeah. 
who came to celebrate and pray for our couple. On behalf of both families, I want to invite you all to the reception afterward at Signature Grand in Davie starting at 6 p.m. We will now be taking photos with both families and friends. As I call your names by groups, please line up to my right side so that we can do this in a quick and efficient manner. First, we will have Achim and Bishop. Next will be Achins, Bishops and Sisters. Next will be Achins, Bishop and Sisters. <clears throat> Next will be Groom's Parents with Bishop and Bride and Groom. After that will be the bride's parents with Bishop and Bride and Groom. Next will be the bride's parents with the bride and groom. After that will be Father George Aranjiri with bride and groom. The bridesmaids and groomsmen with the couple.
Father George Aranjiri with Bride and Groom. Groom's parents, Johnny and Kansali and Bright parents, Sabo and Shane. both grooms and bride's parents. Groom's family, Johnny Uncle, Sali and Thi, Jared, Reshmi and Jovan. Both families of the bride and groom, Johnny Uncle, Sali and Jiren, Reshmi and Jovan, Sabu Uncle, Shiny and Paulvin and Monica. Bright siblings, Paulvin and Monica. (laughs) 
both grooms and bride siblings, Jaren, Reshmi, Jobin, Paulbin, and Monica. Jaren and Reshmi. Sajanandri, Rosamanti and Roshan. Jaren and Reshmi and Jobin and Abi. Sandy, Abu and Abu. Jolly and Sunny. Jason Jagan, Serene Chechi, and Rohan. Ajiyanka, Susie and Susan Andy, Abby and Hannah. Vijayanthar, 
Wayne Wendy, Benjamin, Joel, and Nathan. Ichajan and Amachi. Next will be the RNG family adults. Ichasan Namachi, Paul George, Baby and Ben Lila Andy, Mary and Ken Babu Angle, Betty and Ken Joshi Angle, Sabu Angle and Shiny Andy, Benny Angle and Rani Andy. Next will be the bride's cousins, Paulson, Leah and Andrea, Petson and Sangeeta, Chishma and Nitin and Bridget, Jismi and Rejo, Jasmi, Jodis, Arya, Adit, Akash, Paulin and Anika. Thank <laughs> you. 
Next, Tony and Anukra, please join the picture. Okay, bye. Just me and Richard. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. The friends of the bride and groom, Kavita, Kanjana, Carolyn, Julia, Divya, Divya, Evelyn, Brian, Anju, Noel, Brian, Jeevan, Vaisha, Sangeet, Brian, Leah, and any other friends present.
കൊള്ളേന്റെ പ്രശ്നം എന്റെ ദൈവം ആനക്കുട്ടി എന്ത്
Thank you.